Welcome to the project. Cloud State with Terraform is the name of this project. And yes, state, not automation. Yes, of course, we automate cloud setup with Terraform, but it's more about maintaining the state of your cloud infrastructure. All right, so let's say you have a cloud management team and they are in charge of deploying, setup and managing the infrastructure on the cloud and also very heavy usage of cloud services. And of course, then there will be regular provisioning requests and regular changes, regular deployments. So if you have the heavy usage of cloud services and a very regular usage, then you should also get into some problems. When we talk about infrastructure, there are so many things and setting up ent entire infrastructure is a complex process. This network, this security, there's operating systems, this storage, load balancers, etc, etc. One time infrastructure setup is fine, but if you want to do it multiple times, doing the same thing is not repeatable. Or maybe similar infrastructure for dev, QA, staging, productions, and also multiple projects. So manually, if you're doing that, it's not repeatable. Also, it will be very difficult to track, like who made the change, when the change was made. You try to make documents of the infrastructure, like inventory, but that's time consuming process. And that should happen because if it, the infrastructure state is not centralized. Also, there'll be a huge chance of making human errors. And these things can lead to non-functional infrastructure or bugs, errors, or even exposed infrastructure. In such a huge environment, doing all those things will take a lot of time. All right, so these are some problems, common problems. There could be more. Let's look at the solution. You need to have configuration management of the infrastructure, like at a centralized place. And you need to have everything automated, of course, so there's less chance of making human error. And always you should be maintaining a centralized state of the infrastructure. So all the configuration of your infrastructure is maintained at a centralized place and we can automatically deploy the changes. Any change management can be triggered very easily and we can avoid the human errors. Your infrastructure should be in files or in code. So you can version control it. You have infrastructure as a code and you should have repeatable infrastructure as a code. So you should not hard code values. Also, then it should be reusable across different environments like dev, QA, staging, production, or even across different projects. You should also have a reusable code. Cloud automation adds lots of business value. And here are some statistics. 71% of the company says they have seen 10% of revenue growth. 84% have lowered their operations cost. 81% have become more innovative. When you automate infrastructure, you save a lot of time. You can invest that time in learning and adapting new technologies in your projects, which can add more business value. And of course, you become more agile. So 84% have become more agile. Quickly, they can deploy changes as per the requirements. And I think infrastructure was never so easy. Infrastructure has really become a code now. And we'll see how we're going to do that. So we are going to use Terraform and AWS Cloud Computing Platform. So we're going to set up a complete infrastructure on AWS Cloud by using Terraform. Not only set up, we're going to see how we're going to maintain its state also, any change how we can very easily deploy to our infrastructure. Okay, so here are the things or steps that we're going to do. We're going to set up Terraform with backend first. So we have a centralized state of Terraform or of our cloud infrastructure. Then we are going to set up VPC with NAT gateway, internet gateway, subnet. So we're going to have a secure and highly available VPC set up with Terraform. We'll also provision Beanstack environment with Terraform and also the backend services that we're going to use 
RDS, Elastic Cache, and ActiveMQ. And also, along with that, we have security groups, key pairs, bastion hosts, and few other things that we are going to automate and maintain with Terraform. Okay, so let's do this. But one thing keep in mind, it's not about just automation. It's not about just the speed now. It's also about maintaining the state. Having the state of your infrastructure in a file. That's pretty awesome. And obviously then when you have state, you can very easily make changes, the differential changes. So let's see the architecture of the project. Okay, so this is the architecture. We're going to have Terraform on our local machine. And we're going to store the state, the information about our infrastructure in an S3 bucket, which will be obviously in our AWS cloud account. We'll also configure Terraform with the proper authentication. We're going to use then Terraform to access our AWS cloud services and create a VPC. A VPC that is distributed among multiple zones, or should I say it's subnets distributed among multiple zones. So we'll have public subnet distributed among multiple zones connected to an internet gateway with our route table. So we're going to set up route table and route the traffic to the internet gateway. We'll also have private subnet again distributed among multiple zones. In our private subnet, we're going to uh, set up services like EC2 instances, MySQL database or Elastic Cache. Of course, this private subnet will be connected to a NAT gateway through a route table. And to access this entire VPC, or should I say to access private systems in your private subnet, we are also going to have a bastion host. So we'll even provision bastion host from our Terraform scripts. Okay, so once we have our VPC created, then we are going to create our infrastructure on that. Or should I say lay out our stack, which we'll see in the next architecture diagram. Once we have our VPC set up, we are going to create our stack, the services that we need to set up our stack by using Terraform again. And obviously we are going to maintain the state in the S3 bucket as you have seen the previous design as well. So Terraform is going to set up RDS instance in private subnet, Elastic Cache in private subnet again, Amazon MQ again in private subnet in the VPC and Beanstack where the load balancer of the Beanstack will be in the public subnet and the instances will be in the private subnets. To access our infrastructure, we'll also take care of the security group and their rules and also login key if we need to log into our EC2 instances, which are part of our Beanstack. But we don't need to create it in multiple steps as we did it in Ansible project. We did first thing, then we did second thing. Yes, we could have done all the things together in Ansible as well, but the complexity is too much there. So we divide it into multiple phases, but in Terraform, it's going to be much easier to automate these things. Also, it's not just about automation. It's also about maintaining the state of the infrastructure as I keep repeating that. Right, so there are now varieties of tools in the market to automate cloud computing tasks. But I think in today's market, Terraform is one of the best cloud automation tool. Also, if you have um, used CloudFormation, you know, it will be similar, but CloudFormation is very specific for AWS, but you can use Terraform to do other things as well. You can use other cloud providers and there are other kinds of automation that it supports. So let's get started now.